Shalom, shalom, Shabbat shalom. So if you grab your scriptures, got them handy, your iced coffee, your water, or whatever you're drinking, let's get ready to dive into the word. I'm going to blow this so far. All right. Well, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Glad for everyone that's able to tune in right now. And I uh, hope that uh, we can have a great Bible study together as I get into the Word. So, as you can see, the title of the message is, There Is No Other. He is the Rock. And um, this message actually has been on me for a while to want to do. And so... Um, I've been sharing kind of some teachings lately that I did a handful of years ago called The Greatest Truth Never Told. And so this is kind of based on that, but kind of coming from a different view, uh, from a different direction, but yet the same direction, if that makes sense. Um, so I made sure to write some notes down of what I wanted to say here, because I really want all scripture should always be, anytime we do a message, anytime we teach the word, anybody, whether we're sharing the word with a neighbor in the grocery store or in a sermon, behind the pulpit or whatever it is, um, the word should always be allowed to speak for itself. It doesn't need our help. Amen. Um, now, we, I think a lot of times we like to hear ourselves talk and, and we like to, and, and, and it's not, to, there's nothing wrong with us expounding on things or, or giving a breakdown of a understanding pertaining to certain words and, and things like that. But in and of itself, when it comes to the heart of what the word is, and that is the Father, the Son, salvation, his death and resurrection the the washing away of our sins and waiting for our redemption to draw nigh and the return of our king to bring us all to the fullness so that we are with him forever the word's not hidden and it it doesn't need our help and the father doesn't need our help and yeshua doesn't need our help and so but there are some things that because due to Doctor, um, denominational teachings and and some twisted doctrinal teachings that have where people with a bias or they don't want to accept certain things of what the word says, and so they find a way to change it to fit what they want to believe. We we all know the stories. We've all been there. We either were of the same mind in one point or time or another. Um, and, and y'all had to open our eyes. And, and so if we are continually staying in that perpetual student mentality, then, then we are always ready to, to be refined in what we're learning. And so that we can know his truth. And this is ultimately the truth. There is no other. This is the infallible truth. And, and, and as long as we don't mess with this, as long as we don't question it or doubt it, then we will always find the truth. Amen. So with that said, let me pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you for your most precious set apart day. We thank you for your Sabbath. Abba, I just ask that you will be with us today and everybody around the world who is in your Shabbat or who has finished your Shabbat. But Father, as we get into this message and everybody listening to it now and for anybody who hears it later, may your words and your words only be spoken. Abba, if by any chance that I speak anything that is not your truth, may it not be received by anyone's ears or by their heart 
or by their mind. But that, Father, that they will hear only what is your truth from your scriptures and nothing else. And may anything else, and I hope that nothing comes from my lips, Father. Only you can make this happen, that nothing leaves my lips that's not your truth. But by chance, if my flesh gets into this message somehow, some way, may those words fall to the ground. And may only your truth be received. We ask this in Yeshua's name. Amen. All right. The fan was blown directly in my ear. <clears throat> it's a little warm today, so. Um, okay. So with that said, my opening remarks on this is one of the things I've seen many struggle in understanding is where the father and where where does the father and where does the son all fit in scripture i also see and that ties in with seeing that many who struggle with understanding if the father and son are one in a singular way and does scripture teach that or as a duality now don't misunderstand here Scripture clearly shows that there is one God as far as above all. And you've heard that if you've followed this ministry long enough, you've heard us talk about the suzerain king and the vassal king. The suzerain king is the king of all kings. There is none equal or above that person. That is it. Then there's the vassal king. The vassal king is immediately is the right hand of the suzerain king. That's the best way to put it. So we know that Yeshua is the right hand of the Father. and a, But the suzerain king will give all authority of the kingdom to the vassal king. The vassal king only has to answer to the suzerain king, but everybody answers to the vassal king. Okay? Are you with me so far? And so, but one of the struggles is, is that people... Uh, because of certain things, and I've had so many people tell me this through the years, that trying to understand who the Father and the Son is in the Tanakh, or if you don't know what that word is, the Old Testament, they get confused. And so I'm hoping that this message is going to give clarity. And I know that there are people who struggle with certain teachings because they have this horrific distaste for the Catholic Church or the church period and 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 all and the lies that the church and Christianity is taught but set those biases aside and listen to what the word says and let's look at what does the word teach does the word teach the father and the son singularly like the word echad you get from Deuteronomy 6, 4, Shema Yisrael, Yehovah Eloheinu, Yehovah Echad. Hear, O Israel, Yehovah our God, Yehovah is one. Now, that word one in Hebrew is the word Echad. And the word Echad does not mean a singular form. It actually means a unit. So what does that mean? Can something absolutely mimic and be the exact representation of something? Yes. You see that in, let's just say, the military. People, When people say, you know, what branch were you? I'm Army or I'm a Marine. Okay, well, what kind of Marine? I'm a Marine. They're all trained to be a chad, to be one as a unit under their drill sergeant, they're the one that trains them and everything else. They're one. They become one. They have the same mind and everything else. The same thing is what we are to be in Yah, is to be one with Him. We are to represent Him as Yeshua represents the Father. But that's a whole other message in and of itself. The message of this is to touch on two things. One is um, that there is no other God. So who is the God that those verses talk about? 
Is it talking about the Father or is it talking about the Son? And who is the rock? The title being, there is no other, he is the rock. And the couple of verses that I'd like to put with this as a beginning is, so what does scripture teach as the Father's role and the Son's role? And where does the Son's role in scripture begin and end? As Psalm 119 verse 130 says, the entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding even unto the simple. We do not need to be a scholar to know and understand the word. By this word alone, that is evidence, gives understanding even unto the simple. When we seek the truth of his word, the real revealer of truth is the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. By the authority of the Father given to us through the Son, and as Yeshua said, that the revealer and the comforter would be given unto us. The Holy Spirit is the revealer of all truth. And so the Father, the Holy Spirit shows us the truth of the word if we seek the truth of the word. When we read and study the word and let it speak for itself without seeking our own agenda of what we want it to say, then the Holy Spirit reveals that truth of Scripture to our heart. It's not complicated unless we make it such. Psalm 19, 7. The Torah of Yehovah is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yehovah is pure, making wise the simple. And so my point in that is, like I said, we do not need to be scholars. You don't need to have seminary degree. You don't need to be a Hebrew or Greek scholar of scripture. You could easily take your Bible in whatever language that it's in. And if you study it out and you earnestly seek him, Jeremiah 29, 13 says, if you seek me, you will find me when you search for me with all of your heart. It doesn't have no a uh, thing in parentheses that says if you have a degree in Hebrew or Greek or anything like that. It's plain and sim simple. When you search for me with all of your heart. So this is two parts here. First, we're going to touch on what scripture describes as being no other God. And why am I talking about this? Now, again, if anybody has followed this ministry, you know that we teach that Yeshua is the whole entire Bible. Yeshua did not start in Matthew, that he started at the beginning, that it was Yeshua and the Father, Genesis 1, let us make man in our image. It was Yeshua who walked with Adam and Eve in the garden, not the Father. But why am I saying that? We'll get to that shortly. It was Yeshua, not the Father, who met face to face in the tabernacle as a friend with Moses. It was Yeshua who met with Abraham and put Abraham to sleep while he went between the parts of the animals to create the covenant that he was giving to Abraham that would be descended, uh, that would be passed down to what would become Yisrael. It was Yeshua as most people don't argue who wrestled with Jacob all night long and so on and so forth. So with that said, let's hit one of the very first places I believe in scripture in the Torah where it talks about there is no other God. So we're going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 32. I'm like old man glasses on. Deuteronomy 32, verse 9, and verse 39. For Yehovah's portion is his people. Jacob is the place of his inheritance. Wait a minute. 
Um, I've got that one in the wrong spot. But it still fits with what I want to say here. What does Scripture define as being the inheritance? Whose inheritance are we? Scripture describes us being the inheritance unto Yeshua, that we are his inheritance. And verse 39, now see that I, even I, am he, and there is no God besides me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Nor is there any who can deliver from my hand. Now here in the Torah, many have believed that this is all the Father and have been taught such by the Christian church and things like that. But even the sages of old knew and declared that all of these things were referring to the Son in Scripture. Let's continue on. Let Scripture talk. Turn with me to Isaiah. I love the book of Isaiah because one, it is the one, it is the only book out of all Scripture that was completely found whole without any of it missing. Let's go to Isaiah 42. And Isaiah really brings, everything in Isaiah points to Yeshua, speaks of Yeshua. And many of the chapters in Isaiah is Yeshua talking directly of the things that are being done, including Isaiah 51 and or, uh, 53, which is the most famous chapter that people think uh, pertains to Yeshua because it talks about his, his uh, being crucified. So Isaiah 42, starting uh, verses eight, and, uh, starting with eight and nine. Isaiah 42, eight and nine. I am Yehovah, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved images. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I declare. So behold, the former things have come to pass, pass, and new things I declare before they spring forth, I tell you of them. But let's look at the key thing here in verse 8. I am Yehovah, that is my name. My glory I will not give to another. Now the unfortunate thing in this, Mishpaha, is that I have seen many who have left the church and have come to keep all of the truth of Yah, to, who have come to understand that through the free gift of salvation, we are required to walk in obedience. And so, but in the process of that, over the years, I've had the displeasure and sadness of seeing many who, when they've come to read these scriptures, still with the mindset that this is the Father speaking, that that this means Yeshua cannot be the Lord and Savior. And they walk away from the Word, and they deny Messiah altogether. But if we pay attention to these verses that we're reading, we're going to see that this has always been Yeshua all along. All by the authority given by the Father on His throne, where He has always been and has never left. So let's continue on. Now, Isaiah 43, I'm going to read the whole chapter, because every bit of it stands for what we are talking about right now. So listen carefully. But now thus says Yehovah, again, Isaiah 43. But now thus says Yehovah, who created you, O Jacob, and he formed you, O Yisrael. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. Who's our Redeemer? I have called you by your name. You are mine. 
When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Nor shall the flame scorch you. And we have examples of that too. Daniel with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He literally did this. And we know that it was Messiah. Verse 3, for I am Yehovah your Elohim, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Now, when you read in the Brit Hadashah, at no time does Yeshua ever say that the Father is the Savior and the Redeemer of Israel, but that He is by the Father's will. And we're going to get into that too. I gave Egypt for your ransom. Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Since you were precious in my sight, you have been honored and I have loved you. Therefore, I will give men for you and people for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth, everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory. I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. Bring out the blind people who have eyes and the deaf who have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring out their witnesses that they may be justified. Or let them hear and say it is truth. You are my witnesses, says Yehovah, and my servant whom I have chosen that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Now listen, before me, there was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. Right here, Ms. Baha, this verse has some of the most powerful declaration behind it now there people will argue many ways that you can look at it but if we look at this at face value let the scripture speak for itself he says before me there was no god formed the father was never formed we know that the son was created by the father the firstborn of all creation but he says before me there was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. So if this is the Father, then we have a problem. But we know that's not the case, because we know Yeshua is the only begotten Son, the only begotten Son of the Father, that there is none beside him before or after by the power and authority of the Father in heaven. Verse 11, I, even I, am Yehovah, and besides me there is no Savior. Once again, who is our Savior? Who has the word from the beginning declared to be our Savior? Verse 12, I have declared and saved, I have proclaimed, and there was no foreign God among you. Therefore, you are my witnesses, says Yehovah, that I am God, Elohim. Indeed, before the day was, I am he, and there is no one who can deliver out of my hand. I work. And who will reverse it? Thus says Yehovah, your Redeemer, 
There's that Redeemer again. Who is the Redeemer that we always declare when we speak about the Son? Yeshua is the Redeemer of man. No other, by the Father's will, it has been declared before the foundation of the earth. He even said, I was crucified before the foundation of the earth. Is that literal? No, it was declared to be so by the Father's will in heaven before everything was put into place. It was all handed to Yeshua for what was to be, what would be done, and that Yeshua would be the one to go and do it all the way to his death and resurrection, to his second coming, millennial reign, and everything. So I'm going to, uh, verse 13, indeed, before the day was, I am he, and there is no one who can deliver out of my hand. I work and who will reverse it. When you look at that right there, I remind you of John 17, where Yeshua is praying to the father and says, I thank you for I know all of those who are mine, for I will not lose one. Because no one can deliver out of his hand. No one can take us out of his hand. Verse 14, thus says Yehovah, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I will send to Babylon and bring all down as fugitives, the Chaldeans who rejoice in their ships. I am Yehovah, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Yet another word of who this is talking about, because who's king? Who is king of kings and lord of lords in the scriptures? No one but Yeshua. Thus says Yehovah, who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together, they shall not rise. They are extinguished, they are quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people I have formed for myself, they shall declare my praise. But you have not called upon me, O Jacob. You have been weary of me, O Yisrael. You have not brought me the sheep for your burnt offerings, nor have you honored me with your sacrifices. I have not caused you to serve with grain offerings, nor wearied you with incense. You have bought me no sweet cane with money, nor have you satisfied me with the fat of your sacrifices. But you have burdened me with your sins. You have wearied me with your iniquities. I, even I, he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, I will not remember your sins. Put me in remembrance. Let us contend together. State your case that you may be acquitted. Your first father sinned, and your mediators have transgressed against me. Talking about the priest and the, and the first fathers. Therefore, I will profane the princes of the sanctuary. I will give Jacob to the curse and Israel to the reproaches. Two reproaches. Here in Artena, there's a Catholic church up at the top of the mountain here. and I swear they ring that bell so much, it's about to go cut the cord. <laughs> All right. The, Isaiah 44, 6 through 8. Thus says Yehovah, the king of, of Israel, his redeemer, Yehovah's Tveot, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no Elohim. So, 
Either the Father is the first and the last, or Yeshua is. The Father is not going to be pointing to everybody to pay attention to his Son and declare the same thing he's telling his Son to declare. He has given all these things to his Son to go and be. Because Yeshua is the first born of all creation. Yeshua is the one that the Father gave all authority to and declared by him through him that all these things would be uh, given and done. And we're going to touch on the scriptures that emphasize that. But again, let me reiterate. Thus says Yehovah Elohim, or Yehovah, the King of Israel, his Redeemer, Ye Yehovah Tzveo, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Who can proclaim as I do? Then let him declare it and set it in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people. And the things that are coming and shall come, let them show these to them. Do not fear nor be afraid. Have I not told you from that time and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there a God besides me? Indeed, there is no other rock. I know not one. So here, we keep coming across the very verbiage that our Messiah used that we have declared through all of our gospel teachings that even Christians Yeshua is the rock Yeshua is the Redeemer Yeshua is salvation Yeshua is the Savior Yeshua is King of Israel and all of these things that we have declared so it has to be him that's plain and simple this has to be him and this is not father and son in a singular form that they are one because then who is Yeshua talking to in the Brit Hadashah? Who was he praying to in the garden? To himself? And that could lead down another conversation and, and message. All right. Let's go to the next chapter, Isaiah 45. Verses 5 and 6. I am Yehovah, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. I will gird you, though you have not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun to its setting that there is none besides me. That uh, sorry, lost my place. I am Yehovah, and there is no other. Again and again and again, he reiterates and says over and over of who he is and who this is. Also in the same chapter, let's look at verse 18. For thus says Yehovah, who created the heavens, who is God, who formed the earth and made it, who has established it, who did not create it in vain, who formed it to be inhabited. I am Yehovah, and there is no other. Also, verses 21 through 23. Tell and bring forth your case. Yes, let them take counsel together. Who has declared this? from ancient time who has told it from that time have not i yehovah and there is no other god besides me a just god a savior there is none besides me look to me and be saved mishpaha scripture says that we cannot come unto the father unless we go through the Son, and we cannot get to the Son unless the Father draws us by His Holy Spirit to Him. And here it says, look to me and be saved. 
all you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. I have sworn by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return, that to me, him, Yeshua, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall take an oath. What happens when everything is finished? What has even the church declared all of these centuries? Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Yeshua is Mashiach, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and has been from the beginning by the Father's will. I'm not taking nothing from the Father. Don't, don't misunderstand me, because this could not be except the Father made it so. Yeshua could not proclaim and declare these things that I am reading in Scripture, except that the Father gave him this authority, which the Scripture says so, and we're going to touch on that here soon. Okay, so first I wanted to read the verses, key verses about no other God. Now let's read and recap, starting from the Torah and the beginning again, and starting in Genesis 49, who is the rock, all right? Because with people thinking that this is all talking about the Father throughout the Tanakh until Yeshua's appearance in Matthew, then there no wonder so many are confused. No wonder there is so much confusion between understanding the Father and His role and the Son and the role given to Him by the Father. So Genesis 49 Verse 24, but his bow remained in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty El of Jacob, for there is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Let's go to back to Deuteronomy. I, I, Deuteronomy. Besides Genesis, Deuteronomy is probably my favorite book in the Torah because it's, it, it brings it all together from the commandments to who we are, to who Yeshua is, and to everything of what we were given from the Torah as the teachings and the instruction of what we are to walk in. All right. So Deuteronomy 34, the start at, or 32, I'm sorry, 32, verse 4. He is the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are justice, a God of truth and without injustice, righteous and upright is he. Let's continue, verse 15 at the same chapter. But Jeshurun grew fat and kicked. You grew fat. You grew thick. You are obese. Then you forsook Yah who made you and scornfully esteemed the rock of his salvation. Who is the rock and who is his salvation? Yeshua as it has been declared all throughout the word. Verse 18, of the rock who begot you, you are unmindful of the rock who begot you because it was through the rock, Yeshua, who begot Yisrael and have forgotten the El who fathered you. Verses 30 and 31 of the same chapter. How could one chase a thousand and two put 10,000 to flight unless their rock had sold them and Yehovah had surrendered them? For their rock is not like our rock. Even our enemies themselves 
judges. First Samuel. First Samuel chapter two. And this is Hannah's prayer um, because she was barren and she prayed unto Yah. And in her prayer, verse two, she said, no one is holy like Yehovah, for there is none beside you nor is there any rock like our Elohim. Let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 22. Second Samuel chapter 22. Uh, starting, okay, so verse 2. And he said, Yehovah is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. And I like verse 3 because this is directly what later became, David had to have taken this from here, Psalm 91. The L of my strength in whom I will trust. Psalm 91, um, let's see. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, for he is my rock and my salvation, my God in whom I, my rock and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And here, he is the God of my strength in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation my stronghold and my refuge, my Savior, you save me from violence. Also, 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 32 and verse 47. For who is Elohim except Yehovah? And who is a rock Except our Elohim. What's the other one? Verse 47. Yehovah lives. Blessed be my rock. Let Elohim be exalted. The rock of my salvation. Mishpaha, if you didn't know where these verses were in the Bible and someone was to read them to you, we all know we would all claim that is Yeshua. And all of this is Yeshua from the beginning. Let's go to 2 Samuel 23, verse 3. The Elohim of Israel said... The rock of Israel spoke to me. He who rules over men must be just, ruling in the fear of Elohim. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Like I said, that bell rings for the most... The, it's 447 over here. I have no idea. It must be Catholic Mass or something. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Now let's go to the Psalms. I, yeah, I did that one. All right. Psalm chapter 18. Hey, babe. Would you close that window? rude <laughs> psalm chapter 18 starting uh, or psalm 18 verses 31 and 46 for who is god except yehovah and who is a rock except our elohim so that again a direct quote from the torah right there 
um, or even from Samuel. Also, verse 47. Psalm 18. No, 46. I'm sorry, 46. Yehovah lives again. Um, quoting from the Torah and stuff. Yehovah lives. Blessed be my rock. Let Elohim of my salvation be exalted. Let's go to Psalm 118. I hope you all are writing these verses down because I don't have a, have a way to put it on here. Psalm 118, verses 22 and 26. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Verse 26. Blessed, blessed is he who comes to the name of Yehovah. We have blessed you from the house of of Yehovah. <laughs> I'm just making sure I wasn't missing another verse. Um, okay, so now let's go back to Isaiah again. So Isaiah shows us multiple times very clearly that there is no other Yah, I, even I, am Yehovah. There is none besides me. There is no God that is before me, there was no God formed. And after me, there is no other. Isaiah 26. Now we're going to see what Isaiah says about the rock. Isaiah 26, verse 4. Trust in Yehovah forever, for in Yah, Yehovah is the everlasting rock. Some translation says strength, but when you look up that word in the Hebrew, it means rock. Isaiah, also chapter 30. Verse 29, 30, verse 29, you shall have a song as in the night when a holy festival is kept, gladness of heart as when one goes with a flute, to come into the mountain of Yehovah, to the rock of Israel. Let's go to Isaiah 44. Now, I think I read this when I read those other verses, but it ties in together. Isaiah 44, verse 8. Do not fear, nor be afraid. Have I not told you from that time and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there a God besides me? Indeed, there is no other rock. I know not one. Now here's something I like. Let's, again, a picture of our Messiah. And I'm going to add one more to this that I, did, I don't have in my scriptures here. After I read Daniel 2 here. So in Daniel 2... Is the door driving nuts? <laughs> Daniel 2, verses 34 and 35. You watched while a stone was cut out without hands, 
which struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were crushed together and became like chaff from the summer threshing floors. The wind carried them away so that no trace of them was found. I think I ended up reading further, but oh well. Did I? No, I didn't. Um, that no trace of them was found. And the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Now, this part I'm about to read, I'm reading to show the separation. Yeshua is not, again, I want to reiterate, Yeshua is not a separate deity in the sense that he is of his own power. Yeshua is a separate deity created by the Father. In, my, in the series that I did of The Greatest Truth Never Told, um, in part three or four, it's, it's, it's titled, Are the Father and the Son Separate? Adam and Eve, I think, are a great picture of understanding how Yeshua came about. Eve was not born of a mother and father. Eve was taken from Adam and built. Yeshua, by the Father, he took a part of himself. I'm not saying he took his rib or something. He took a part of himself, and however way that is in our finite minds, we will not understand that till it's time. But the Father took a part of himself because he is the begotten Son. How, do, how many times do we read that Abraham begot sons and daughters, Isaac begot sons and daughters, all these people begot sons and daughters. Yeshua, the Father, begot Yeshua, okay? And so, yes, they are echad and as a unit, and they are one. He is in him and, him and the Father in him, as Yeshua says, but it's not because they are singular one in that way, but that they is because he literally comes from him. But Yeshua also said that when we walk in him, then we are one with him and will be one with the Father, and, and the Father will manifest himself in us and all of these things. But we're still not singular one. So here is one of the many places in Scripture that shows that. Daniel 7 First, we're going to read verses 9 and 10. I watched till thrones were put in place, and the Ancient of Days was seated. His garment was white as snow, the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him. 10,000 time, 10, times 10,000 stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. Now, watch this. Verse 13 and 14. I was watching in the night visions and behold, one like the son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the ancient of days. They brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. His kingdom, the one which shall not be destroyed. What Daniel was given the vision to see was what was established in heaven. The father on his throne, the son brought before him, and everything given to the son to have a, 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 a kingdom, nations, peoples who will all serve him, that he will be God over. And that's this. That's us. That's the Bible. And that's everything from Genesis to Revelation. Let's continue. 
Habakkuk, or in Hebrew, Habakkuk. And it's right before Zephaniah, for anybody who's wondering where that's at. I think it's right between Zephaniah and Nahum. Habakkuk, or Habakkuk, uh, 1, verse 12. Are you not from everlasting, O Yehovah, my Elohim, my God of gods, my Holy One? We shall not die, O Yehovah. You have appointed them for judgment. O oh, rock, you have marked them for correction. Okay, so now let's touch on the things where people, well, where, could, here's something. If People say the red letter writing in scriptures is all where Yeshua speaks. If it was done correctly, most of the Tanakh would be red letter writing. I'm just saying. <laughs> most of the Tanakh would be red letter writing. All right, Matthew. Let's go to Matthew. Let's go to the Brit Hadashah. Chapter 21, verses 42 through 44. And Yeshua is speaking. Yeshua said to them, have you never read in the scriptures? I already read this. Remember, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was Yehovah's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of the Father is. Yeah, or Elohim will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. And whoever falls on this stone will be broken. That's all of us that we fall on him. That's a good thing. But on whomever it falls, like the, like the description in Daniel 2, it will be ground in, grind him to powder. To be destroyed like chaff in the wind to blow away. Let's go to Romans chapter 9. I've been trying to make sure I keep my, my own personal words in this to a minimal. Otherwise, I'd turn this into a four-hour sermon. There's so much we could get into. But really, I'm trying to show you, Mishpaha, the word doesn't need our help. If we just read the scriptures together and, and, and line it up to what is the, the, the clear picture it paints and presents to us from beginning to end. Romans 9, 32 and 33. Why? Why? Because they did not seek it by faith, but as it were, by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense, and whoever believes on him will not be ashamed, will not be put to shame. Let's go to First Peter. Chapter 2, that's right after Hebrews and James. 1 Peter chapter 2. Verses 4 through 8. Coming to him as a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by the Father and precious, you also... As living stones, because we become a part of Yeshua, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to the Father through Yeshua Messiah. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion 
a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who builds on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble, being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. Now, I want to touch on key things that Yeshua directly shows in the Brit Hadashah, proving that all of what is spoken of that I, that I read here from the Torah, from the Tanakh, or for the lack of sake of argument, the Old Testament, that it was him all along. So let's go to, as it were, some of this red letter writing. Let's go to John chapter 5. Now, John chapter 5, I put this in here for the purpose of reiterating the duality that is the Father and the Son. John chapter 5, whoops, past it. Okay. John 5, verses 16 through 47. Once again, let the word speak for itself. For this reason, the Jews persecuted Yeshua and sought to kill him because he had done these things on the Sabbath. Excuse me, sorry. But Yeshua answered them, My father has been working until now, and I have been working. Therefore the Jews sought all the more to kill him because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that Elohim was his father and making himself equal with the Father. Then Yeshua answered and said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, the Son can not or can do nothing of himself but what he sees the Father do. For whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself does. And he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the Son gives life to whom he will. For the Father judges no one, but has committed all all judgment to the Son, that all should honor the Son just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Most assuredly, I say to you, you, I'm sorry, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life. And shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of Elohim, or the Son of the Father. And those who hear will live, for as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself, his authority, clearly. And has given, well, he says it right here, and has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth. 
those who have done good to the resurrection of life, those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous, because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. If I bear, now I want to reiterate what has been, when did he send him? He has been from the beginning. He was sent from the beginning before it all began. Daniel 7 proves that out among the other verses where it says that he is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. All these scriptures that I've read and quoted or well, not quoted, but read them. Verse 31, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another who bears witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. You have said to John, and he has borne witness to the truth. Yet I do not receive testimony from man. But I say these things that you may be saved. He was the burning and shining lamp. And you were willing for a time to rejoice in his light. Talking about John. But I have a greater witness than John's. For the works which the Father has given me to finish, the very works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. And the Father himself who sent me has testified of me. You have neither. Now here is just some of the evidence in the Brit Hadashah that shows that at Mount Sinai with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all of these places, even back to Adam and Eve, that nobody has seen or heard the Father because Yeshua says it right here. Where am I at? But I have a greater witness than the Father than John's. For the work which the Father has given to me, the very works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has testified of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form. But you do not have his word abiding in you because whom he sent him you do not believe. You search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. But you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. I do not receive honor from men, but I know you that you do not love, have the love of Yah in you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe who receive honor from one another and do not seek the honor that comes from the only God? Do not think that I shall accuse you to the Father. There is one who accuses you, Moses, in whom you trust. For if you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? Mishpaha Everything of what Moses spoke about throughout the Tanakh was all Yehovah. And so if, all, if Moses spoke about Yeshua, then all of it had to be Yeshua. Because there's no separation or indication of father and son in Torah. It's all directly who Yehovah that he met face to face on the Mount of Olives, spent 80 days with on the Mount of Olives, among all the other things. Uh, uh, Deuter 
I think it's Deuteronomy 32 or 33, where he's sitting in the tabernacle face to face. Yah even says, I sit face to face with Moses as with a friend, but I speak through the prophets or, or through dreams and visions to everybody else. And then on top of that, Yeshua said, no one has seen the Father, but yet Moses saw the backside of Yehovah. That if that was the Father, then someone has seen the Father. Jacob was face to face with the fa- with Yeshua. If that was the Father, and some do say that, then all of this is wrong. But we know that's not true. And we know that the understanding of what has been taught, unfortunately, has been incorrect. All right. Next thing, John chapter 8, verses 24 through 26. Therefore, I said to you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Then they said to him, who are you? And Yeshua said to them, just what I have been saying to you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge concerning you, but he who sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I heard from him. So let's compare verse 26 to Luke 24 real quick. That verse there, verse 26, let me read. I have many things to say and to judge concerning you, but he who sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I heard from him. So we we look at Luke 24, 25 through 27. Yeah. Then he said to them, O foolish ones, And slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. He showed them who he was from the Torah on, from the Torah and the prophets. And then let's look at John 8, verses 56 through 58. Yeshua says, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, You are not yet 50 years old, and have you seen Abraham? Yeshua said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Where does I am come from? In the English, Exodus 3, 14, Moses said, Who do I say sent me? I am that I am sent you. So my final verses... We're going to go through these Psalm 68. Psalm 68, verse 4. Sing to Elohim, sing praises to his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds by his name, Yah. And rejoice before him. We all know there's only one who comes on the clouds. Let's go back to John. John 5, 43. Yeshua says, I have come in my father's name. And you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, him you will receive. What is the father's name? 
Yehovah. What is the way of the ancient path? Sons carry on their father's name. We have Yehovah the Father, and we have Yehovah Yeshua. Let's go to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians 1, verses 15 through 20. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, the visible and invisible. That means Yeshua created the heavens and the earth in Genesis 1. Whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the ecclesia, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him all the foot fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. We're going to go backwards on this one. 1 Corinthians 15. And the reason why is because I wanted to read in Colossians there and then bring home what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 24 through 28. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father. When he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. Great white throne judgment. Revelation 20, verses 10 through 15. Verse 27, For he has put all things under his feet, but when he says all things are put under him, it is evident that he who put all things under him is accepted. Now when all things are made subject to him, then the Son himself will also be subject to him who put all things under him. The God, Father, may be all in all. And then the last one I wanted to throw in, because of the separation between the name Yehovah, and some people may pronounce it different, and the name of the Son, Yeshua, Jesus, is there was there has been found pieces of revelation from Hebrew text a few years ago, a handful of years ago. One of those places which I think is so it, Yah says what has been hidden will be brought into the open, and this is one of those things for sure. So in the English it says this Revelation one verse eight. I am the Alf, I am the Aleph and the Tav, the beginning and the end, which Yehovah says in the Tanakh, the Old Testament, and it says here, says the Lord, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. But in these fragments of revelation found in Hebrew, this verse says, I am the 
Alpha and I'm not the Alpha. I am the Aleph and the Tav. The first and the last says Yod He Vav He. Says Yehovah. And this is Yeshua speaking here. And again in verse 11, I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And we have one more time, I think. Where where is it? I might be thinking of a different verse on that. Yeah, it's about be mindful, don't lest you walk naked and they see your shame. I'm coming as a thief in the night. Okay, so so yes. So Mishbaha, there is no other God but Yeshua since the foundation of the earth by the Father's will. Because the Father on his throne, the Father cannot be in the presence of evil. Not in any way, shape, or form because this is why he created Yeshua. This is why And whatever reason why that he has got all of this happen and why this all has come about from the creation to the fall of man to the redemption and everything else. It is the Father's will, as Scripture says and teaches. I love Daniel 7. Those verses I read are such a beautiful, short, but clear, precise picture about who the Father is and who the Son is. And, and that before the foundation of the earth, as we read, everything was established unto the Son, that he would be given a dominion, that peoples and languages and tongues would worship him, that he would have a kingdom that would never end, and that all would come to bow and confess that he is King of kings and Lord of lords, that he comes on the clouds, and everything that that follows with it. It has been Yeshua from Genesis chapter 1. Yes, the Father is spoken of in, in, in a few different places, but key places to show where Yehovah Yeshua gets his authority, who set this in the place. But when we read all the verses, there is no other God besides me. I know not one. There is no other rock. I, even I, am Yehovah, your Savior, your Redeemer, that before me there was no God formed, and after me there will not be another, because it was Yeshua all along by the Father's will. This is why Lucifer fell because of his hatred for what was given to the only begotten son and who knows what else to, pertaining to all of that. We don't know the whole story. We just know that pride entered him and he fell and him and a third of the angels were cast out of heaven. But all the way to the end of the word and by Yeshua's own words here in the flesh, besides what he spoke to Moses and the prophets, and to King David, even David said, uh, Yehovah, or Adonai, told my Lord, Yeshua, and in and, and the scripture that says, do you know the Father, and do you know his son, do the Father's name, and do you know his son's name? And what does Yeshua say? I come in my Father's name. And so, Again, the word speaks for itself. I don't need to help it any. Nobody needs to help it any. If we just read what it says and follow the pattern and everything that it lays out from beginning to end, we see a clear picture of who it is from beginning to end, all because of the Father's will. It is the Messiah, Yeshua. They are not singular father and son. They are echad, they are a unit, they are a duality. The Son 
does everything that the Father gave him to do. Yeshua said, I do nothing except what the Father gives me. He prayed in the, in the Garden of Gethsemane three times. If it be your will, please take this cup from me. Well, if they were singular and one, then he would be praying to himself, asking himself to take this away from himself. And when he was on the cross, when he said, Ali, Ali, Alaksabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He would be saying this to himself. So it doesn't work. There, there is a duality. They are echad. They are one because he directly comes from the Father like Eve directly came from Adam. But they are still separate. He's not a separate deity. He is a deity by the Father's will, by the authority given to him, by the suzerain king to the vassal king. But as stated in 1 Corinthians 15, he will subjugate himself and give all authority back to the Father when everything is completed. And as we read in Revelation 21 and 22, that the Father will be on his throne and the Lamb will be at his right hand, right next to him. Amen? Amen. Shabbat shalom. Shalom, shalom. Love you all. But most of all, y'all loves you.